All right, enough about friggin' Mormons. Let's talk about some Scientologists. Now, y'all may know something about Scientology. You may have watched the Leah Romini's uh, Life After Scientology or whatever, the docu-series on, on A&E. That may be what you know. It's very one-sided, but it, it is what it is. Uh, I don't know, has anybody ever had their thetans measured? Or any of you actually Scientologists? I know a lot of you from Kilikali, and there's a lot of Scientologists there. That's the uh, sort of uh, center of it, Los Angeles, so I don't know. Um, but uh, I've had my Thetans measured. Uh, audit I got audited for fun. Um, I won some money gambling, and I did it in Cincinnati. It was pretty funny, uh, just to kind of fuck with people. That's kind of my, my jam. I'm the dude who invites uh, Jehovah's Witnesses into his house so he can fuck with them. Um, <laughs> so anyways, I'm a, I, I, very lo- I, I, I had a lot of engrams in my, in, my, in my system. I had to, you know, release, uh, so to speak. But anyways, the Church of Scientology. Um, what do we know about it? Well, yo, it's based in Cali, yo. Riverside, California, Los Angeles, and Clearwater, Florida. Um, it was incorporated in 1953 or 1954, um, whatever, um, and it got and fought hard as fuck for its nonprofit status in 1993. You have to understand, for 40 years, it was recognized as a for-profit, and the Church of Scientology fought and fought and fought and fought the federal government to get that nonprofit status, like the uh, Church of Latter-day Saints or the Catholic Church, or, you know, whatever, any church enjoys nonprofit status, okay? It's uh, interesting, you know, the Church of Scientology says it has anywhere from 25,000 to 8 million adherents. The Church of Scientology would tell you they have 80 billion adherents, you know, if, if, they, if they could. But that's kind of, that's a murky, that's a murky number. Um, but uh, each church and mission is a franchise. So if you get your OT levels up, meaning you've gone clear, your OT high, you can essentially start your own, uh, you know, uh, mission or church. But it's a franchise. It's like starting a fucking McDonald's, meaning you... The Church of Scientology is the only, as far as I know, the only religion whose religious doctrines, doctrinal works of authorship books are still protected by copyright. They were, in fact, one of the major lobbyists behind extending copyright along with the Walt Disney Company in 1998. So, um, uh, but it's like a franchise. Like, you want to, you know, open a church, you basically license the right. It's like opening McDonald's. You license the right, use the golden arches or make Big Macs. The same for the Church of Scientology. So they have essentially a franchise um, set up. Now, uh, the mother church is CSI. This is the Church of Scientology International. And the, um, the tech, the, you know, the, the, the church also has the Religious Technology Center. This is the part of the church that controls all of its copyright, trademarks, and intellectual um, properties, which are very valuable to the church, and you'll see that in the episode. Um, they have their own naval force or monastic group of the most dedicated Scientologists, which is called Sea Org. Um, and there's eight celebrity centers. Now, you're going to probably recognize um, uh, 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 the main celebrity center, which you'll find in Los Angeles, um, which Matt and Trey parody um, in some ways. Um, but there's eight celebrity centers. Now, L. Ron Hubbard, who started Scientology, um, you know, saw from the er- early on that having celebrities partake and getting celebrities to be part of the religion would get other people to join. And so you have people like Tom Cruise, John Travolta, um, you know, a lot of famous actors um, you know, who are Scientologists. I mean, you look at the fucking full, full, full list of these places. But the celebrity centers are basically, um, you know, 
open to the public, but you have to be a person, a celebrity to hang, to hang out there. And these are recruiting spaces largely. So you can see the church, Scientology, the big blue building, and we have uh, the celebrity center. Okay, a little bit about L. Ron Hubbard, controversial figure. Um, I mean, he's been accused of pedophilia, sex abuse, uh, tax evasion, other forms of criminal acts, but he's the prophet of the church, and he was also a known science fiction writer, and um, one that was controversial in that in that sense and also very not not a very popular one um but he uh wrote a book called dianetics um and it's also a philosophy of the mind over body and this whole concept of releasing engrams and engrams are your negative feelings based upon past experiences there's a lot of various discrepancies over his life story um i mean where he was born, uh, popularity of books, everything. It's all really murky, okay? But he was once said, had, well, it's claimed that he said that the way to get rich is to found a religion. Okay? Um, in 1955, he started the Project Celebrity, which is where he started recruiting celebrities to the religion again, because he saw the value of having a brand, famous brand ambassadors, essentially. Um, so what happens is uh, you go, you know, you get audited, um, you pay, you become what's called a pre-clear. Um, and then you pay and pay more uh, to go clear. Clear means you've kind of reached like the, uh, a high level, right? And I think it costs, because to get higher, higher up in the religion, you have to buy books and the books are expensive. And um, this is why in the episode, you know, uh, the president is asking Stan to write more. It's to, so they can make three million dollars. Um, but once you've gone clear, I've heard, I've heard it's cost upwards of like 130 grand to go clear. Then you, once you've gone clear, it's OT levels, operating feet and levels, which I believe go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And each one of those levels um, are spiritual, but you have to pay, you know, five to ten thousand dollars to, and, and then put in time and you pay for the time. Um, etc. Um, but this is all about anti-psychiatry. He was, uh, L. Ron Hubbard was anti-psychiatry, um, you know, and the religion is founded on self-help ways of getting rid of negative um, feelings or, you know, it's all, he, he called it alternative psychology, but it's really against, like, psychology. Um, free personality tests. Are you happy? Really bases, the personality tests really, you know, base themselves on this fact of they're long and you find out that you're sad. Like, like um, uh, you know, uh, Stan finds out. So some of the issues, and you may have seen this in, in Life After Scientology with Leah, um, you know, is that part of the religion is anti-psychiatry, getting help. <laughs> um, you know, uh, but... You pay for your auditing counseling, so you have to pay for that. Stan pays $200. And then, um, basically, you have to be fucking rich to be spiritual. Meaning, to be more spiritual is grounded in how much you can pay to get your operating thetan levels up, your OT levels up. So it's often commensurate with your wealth. This is why there's a lot of uh, famous people who are high up in the religion is because they can pay to get their thetans up. Now, the church is known for using intellectual property law to sue critics, people who cite from Dianetics or any of the books to critique the group are often sued on, with copyright law. Um, they use defamation all of the time to threaten critics. Um, you know, there was fear that Comedy Central and South Park would be sued over, over this episode. Um, 
And, you know, they use these laws to protect the religious. They say that quoting their scripture, um, defaming them, you know, uh, and why they sue is to protect their religious freedoms. But they'll use lawsuits, um, you know, to harass critics, to harass ex-members. Um, they have things called fair game, eth ethics technology, and knowledge reports. These are all ways of intimidating current members who may be leaving, of doing um, spying on them, um, snitching, punishing them, putting them in solitary confinement. Um, they have their own office of special affairs and the rehabilitation project force. You should look into that shit. It is some next level shit. Um, it's just pretty interesting. But again, like the irony, you know, here, First Amendment irony is here's a group seeking to have free speech, to express itself, to have religious freedoms, to say what it wants and believe what it wants, but also then use, try to silence people who are critical, critical of that. So there's a lot of irony there.